Is that that's close to you, isn't it? Spiking, is it? Yeah, it's just down the road. Yeah. Oh, do you want to come? Yeah. I was or do you want to bring Happy? I'm sure I can get you on the guest list. It's not very yeah. full. Yeah. Okay. Well, 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 that would be good. I know, I know, Annette won't be there because she's kind of swimming. But that'll be that'll be a guess. We can get me on, okay. the, on the guest list. And we can discuss that after the show. I'll make it. But trying to guess. This is what happens no, when no, you're a VIP. Yeah, yeah, I know. After yeah, the okay. show. Yeah. So, okay. Hey, well, let's let's start the show because it looks like we're going to interview Mr. Trump for a little bit and then talk yeah. with Greg about everything else and all yeah. his success. Yeah, well, let's 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 just get straight in there then. This is Two O F Entertainment. What could be more reprehensible than two old farts? Three old farts featuring Dick and Steven and Greg Shapiro with Funny Ha Ha. Look at that. Standing ovation. Yeah. Standing ovation. Yeah. 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 And the thing is, you look, we, we've the whole crew's still here. The whole Hi. audience is still here since the last show we did. So this is especially for you. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. No, yeah. no. David, David, has, David has live audiences now. It helps, uh, it helps, it helps his a, ego. A star is born, and it's not me. So yeah, yeah, we've still got all this lot still in here. We've got a coach load of them. They come in for no snobs and knobs. And uh, I told them you were going to be on. And right. uh, they said, is he a snob or a knob? I said, he's neither. And they said, "Well, we will just we'll just stay and see what happens." Yeah, so they're still here. So well, welcome. thank you. It's been a couple of months. The last time we spoke to you, you were in the in the French countryside being an aristocrat. Yeah, aristocrat. Sorry. Right. Yeah, yeah, you were doing that and rewriting and now, my whole show. <laughs> yes, and uh, now you yeah. are the talk of uh, Europe. You are. Well, interview, you have an interview. In, you are. You are you the French. Um, you 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 were in Playboy. No, I, oh, not yeah. the centerfold, but you were interviewed in Playboy. Let me just clarify that. I don't want. Like, yeah, I took it back. I took. I took it back when I realized he weren't actually going to be the centerfold. Okay. Yeah. You you have your television show, which is a uh, which is something's funniest videos. I'm not sure that what country they're using. Norway's funniest videos or in Amsterdam. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got your sold out comedy tour, which apparently David now is going to be a VIP and get to sit in the loo and yeah. listen to it. So we're very excited. Yeah. So. There. Yeah. Yeah. so uh, the uh That's yeah I've, I've golly i've got two u.s election shows honestly and uh one was that yeah i was gonna ask you about yeah i was gonna ask you about the boom chicago one because were you crying in your beer or were you do you think <laughs> right you I think, oh, well, this I mean, is I was, the best thing best thing ever happened to me so the 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 show at boom chicago is just called politically incorrect the u.s election edition but my solo right. show <laughs> that i'm touring around the netherlands right now that is called leaving trump land 2.0 right so that um was uh yeah i mean i had to rewrite it once in july and i've had to rewrite it again since the 5th of november <laughs> so yeah uh am i leaving trump land personally uh you did uh, i did i have done <laughs> you already uh, did you're in you're in europe so now, what do you think yeah. about all of this the, the... uh yeah well i mean i made a uh you know video explainer I was, yeah. uh, I was really impressed i was inspired by this comedian who came out i think on election night uh, right. J.L. Coven. I don't know if you've seen him. He's like Georgetown Law, <laughs> 2004, and now he's okay. a stand-up comedian. But he had a bit about um, how there's no power uh, bigger in 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 politics than making hurt people feel heard. And uh, okay. I think he talked about Donald Trump being like the the grievance Santa Claus, <laughs> yeah. Santa Trump. <laughs> and you know, for so so. He said he he invented that term, and I thought, oh, that there's really something with that. And you know, not only was uh, Trump so much better at um, dealing with this systemic wealth inequality, you know, in, in America, uh, and people feeling just like generationally, the rich keep getting richer, and minimum right. wage is still at seven bucks an hour. So, uh, yeah, Trump basically, yeah, convinced so many people, like even if it's going to be painful in the short term. We'll take the disruptor, please. Right. Yeah. And uh, and someone else was saying, even like with, with Joe Biden, like it, it's not even failing to listen, but just being typical bad boyfriend behavior. Mm -hmm. Like, 
no, it's fine. Inflation right. is on the way down and the economy is improving. And you know what? We're doing a really good job. <laughs> that right. is so toxic and insulting and demeaning to people. So I, it's just not surprising yeah. that there was a huge rejection yeah. or honestly, just people not showing up. Right. Well, I think people, I think people showed up because of the numbers, but it's, I, this reminded me and this I'll date myself when uh, Reagan slaughtered yeah. Jimmy Carter. Um, when you, when you, if, right. If you remember that election, I, I do. don't think, okay, so do I, I don't think Carter won anything. I mean, like it was really bad. Like he really, Reagan just wiped him out. In terms and of the just, electoral map, I think the worst one was 1984 and like Walter Mondale only got oh, his yeah. own state or something. Yeah. But because yeah, he was driving in the tank. Um, the most no, it's just, yeah. it's, it's wow. just, it's just, it's just the Democrats had, yeah. if you will, no message. Um, and the Republicans, whether the message is good, bad, or indifferent, yeah. at least had a message. The only thing I've said, and I've said this, you know, it would have been nice if the Democrats grew some, you know, grew some balls, had a message, and did whatever. So you just would but never we, vote for a woman. I hear you. I, I would vote for a woman. I don't care. I mean, I, whoever's the best qualified. Yeah. The only thing I said about Trump is I like some of his policies, all there, love them. They're great. You're getting the Trump bump. Love it. My thing is in 2008, will he leave? If he leaves and democracy stays, then you know what? I'm a happy yeah. guy. But in 2030, if he's still president under whatever, yeah. then it would be like, oh, I was right. It doesn't well, matter how prosperous we are, then democracy goes away. Then we're under, like, we have a, we have a Putin or whoever. But Trump's going to be there forever now, because that's what Greg said, because he's called Santa. So he's going to be there forever. I mean, yeah. I mean, what does is, what is Trump Santa sound like? Do we know what Trump Santa would could, could, would you, Are we going to queue up and sit on his knee? What would that it's, be like? It's you know? bad Santa, really. You know, like, you hope. Yeah. That was a good movie. Santa's going to be like, yeah, right? <laughs> and he's like, ho, 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 you know, what would you like? And Trump is more like, everything is terrible. You're going to, you're right. so bad. Every time you right. feel like you didn't get what you want for Christmas, you're totally right. Everybody, right. your parents are awful, evil people. We're going to deport your parents. And you'll be the anchor baby. Or we won't do family separation. And you can go with them to a country yeah. like Guatemala where you've never lived. Right. So, well, 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 Mr. Trump, uh, uh, are, you gonna, are, are, you, are we going to invite you around for Turkey or, or cats and dogs? <laughs> well, right Jesse Waters did not get invited to Thanksgiving. That that's <laughs> going to make for some very awkward Thanksgivings right. around America. I was just making a um, a bingo card, a Trump forty seven bingo card. Because I've already got people seeing, like sharing stuff with me. Uh, so, so what's that? What, how, what does that look like? A it's Trump twenty-four audience? spaces, one free space in the middle. But you know, twenty-four of like worst case scenarios, so that when <laughs> you know the U.S. steps out of NATO, I don't have to be like, "What?" I can just be the satisfaction of ticking a little box. Oh my and if god! It doesn't happen, then I'll be pleasantly surprised. But um, even like stepping out of the Paris Climate Accord, like I'm not even putting that on the bingo card. That's like that's a given. Uh, yeah. uh, well, what about what about this 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 cop thing that's going on? Because I heard this morning that, the cop um, thing. What about twenty nine? Yeah. That's cop, yeah, cop, cop twenty nine. He's talking about the, uh, the climate thing. Yeah, because Paris. like the, the, the yeah. Americans, the Americans are not there. The Canadians are not there. Uh, yeah, but the Brits, right, truck, the, the, the Brits trucked up, and the thing hmm. that which, which surprised me. Is the Taliban have trucked up? Sure. So, well, uh, yeah. so they came, but they, they, they think obviously they think that's more important than than the climate. Uh, the Wait. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it, the way I've heard it was the Taliban is taking the climate more seriously than <laughs> the United States. Than America. In yeah. the United States, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. well, what do you? And you know, you're a big climate guy. So I am. When you, when you I mean, there's just so much good stuff happening that just it right. is maybe under the radar. But, but, but what was uh, funny is because when you said, "Hey, do you want to come on in November?" and you're like, "Yes," and you was like, "But yeah. I'm going to come on after the election." I like this is going to yeah. be great. Whoever wins. Yeah. So, yeah. in in with all the climate, the U.S. climate companies here, or you know, yeah. they're doing whether it's carbon or batteries or whatever, are the government's already saying next year they're going to cut funding. Oh and yeah, they're already preparing for it because yeah. Trump doesn't believe in global warming or climate, whatever you want to call it. So yeah. what's your, what's your thought on that? Well, he hasn't recently. I, I don't know. I found something. Ah, yeah. There was just like Twitter X something, some rumor right. about how Elon Musk does have the ear, you know, he's like the, right. Elon, the first lady at this point. Uh, 
I saw someone just well, according to according to a spokesman for the US I had last week or Sunday, I think, on the BBC. Yeah. Um, Elon Musk is actually uh, Donald Trump's brain. That's sure. How it's, uh, so it's okay. now, uh, Susie uh, Wiles yeah. is uh, Susie Wiles, yeah. staff, the first ever female chief of staff. How about right. that? So we can't have the first female president, but we do get the first female COS. Anyway, so, yeah, uh, yeah I, it's it's a. Uh, it's kind of a, a toss up maybe, or it's, it's it's hard to say what will happen. I'm you know pretty sure like step out of the Paris climate accord, step out of right. all this international entanglements or whatever but in terms of, in terms of Trump. But um, you know, if it keeps making money uh, and here is Elon Musk, who's so heavily invested into Tesla batteries and right. uh, recharging stations. I don't think Elon is going to turn his own, his back on his own company. And maybe even there would be an opposite effect where, you know, Elon Musk uh, being the brain, if you will, uh, right. might even say, you know, like eh, climate business is not all bad. Uh, and uh, it's entirely possible that we have a huge game change in the United right. States. Well, the I, it, I mean, Trump could say it's all made in America, so it's OK then. Sure. It's just, it's just it's just climate stuff from not made in the U.S. Yeah. So like, yeah. Wind, like windmills and stuff. Uh, Wind uh, turbines uh, coming out of whatever. Yeah. Uh, yes. And Germany, you know, or, yeah. or Chinese Chinese solar panels. That sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. I know Elon Musk had a whole lot. He, he had invested in companies that were making um, uh, roof tiling, yeah. which was uh, which was had solar Rob's panels. Right. Whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Solar panels. So, so, like roof tiles. So, yeah. yeah, so I mean, that could uh, that could be that that's that's a sort of bubbling under, and that could be, well, that could be a compromise for everybody then. Bubbling under, like oil. I hear, I, I see where you're going with your <laughs> visual analogies. Yeah. Um, well, someone just for, forwarded me a piece today about how wastewater might be yeah. able to become jet fuel. What? Nice. Yeah, I thought I thought you'd appreciate that. Yes. Uh, so yeah, David, did you read that one, or did you just forward? I it? did. Yeah. No. No. Hey. I read. It. I read. It. <laughs> David, yeah. can you read, or are you just showing yeah. the pictures? Well, I mean, no, I, I like. I had a nice picture of an airplane and stuff, yeah. you know, and, and you know, it wasn't, it wasn't. And I got the crayon. I printed it out and got the crayon. Oh, and all, all this there stuff. You go. But I actually, you... I originally thought that it was going to be the waste water from the aeroplanes. That's what I. Ah, you know, like, that it would be really it, like a closed it, uh, circle or whatever. Yeah, loose. that's that's what I thought. But then, but, but, you know, the more you you read it. Yeah. Thinking, okay. Yeah, that, that makes right. a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, well. So as far as I know, uh, right. and as, as far as I know, the whole uh, future of aviation is really kind of a toss-up right now. And it's one of these industries, you know, like crypto, like uh, right. quantum, like AI. That someone's going to get ready to corner the market on the future. Now, uh, I think the big debate is: is aviation going to be like? SAF sustainable synthetic aviation fuel, or will it be more like uh, new uh, electric powered or hydrogen powered uh, propulsion? And uh, yeah, there's like some new electric motor that is capable of uh, turning electricity directly into thrust. Haven't read that, but anyway, but so the wastewater, yeah, as far as I understand, they take wastewater from like breweries, they take wastewater yeah. from agricultural. Uh, and you know they, they've been Processes, making sustainable yeah. aviation fuel from used cooking oil, right? Right. And that's been for at least ten years already. Um, it's a small part of the mix, but it's it's like seventy percent uh, less CO two emissions, right. and I mean that could uh, become the the game changer, I suppose. Because it's these really, really big so seller in the south of America because it smells like chicken. You know, yeah, yeah. Like people ch chasing these airplanes everywhere. You know, like uh, yeah, yes, yeah. big old yeah. plane farts. As long as Boeing doesn't design anything, we're fine. Because you think if you have a hydrogen, <laughs> if you have a hydrogen Boeing plane yeah. somewhere between takeoff and landing, it's going to become the Hindenburg. Oh, so as long God. as you get like a real manufacturer doing it, yeah, um, I think you're yeah. good. Boeing just has. I know the mechanics went on strike. The mechanics just all came back from strike. Oh, okay. But to me, it's more of like um, you still have to make a plane that flies, and I don't know, doors don't fly off, screws yeah, don't sure. come apart, you right. little, th little things like that. So yeah, if yeah. Boeing's going to do any, or when you when you launch your spaceship, um, oh yeah, it should work. Yeah, I, maybe. I was watching. I was oh, watching. It did, work. it did work, but only one way. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I was watching a video, and one of the on the way there, one of the astronauts said the mission control, and I laughed because I knew they were safe. But if I had watched this live, I would have been terrified for them. No, the astronauts like 
we hear a humming sound coming from wherever. Mm-hmm. Is that supposed to be? Yeah. And you hear the guys at Mission Control going, um, no, we'll check with Boeing. And then, like, they come back emphatically, like, no, that's not a good thing. And they're like, oh, we're just wondering. Like, they're almost at the this, you know, docking thing. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. Yeah. I would have been like, just get me off this. I would have been like, stop yeah. it. Get out in spacesuits. We'll fly the rest of the way. Ah, I mean, ah. So, yeah. So, until Boeing can actually make a plane again. Right. Um, and so, when Trump says... Been- wouldn't that have been funny if they'd have said, "Hold on, there's a there's a Boeing worker here with a harmonica," you know? I mean, that could you know because he forgot to get off. Thanks for slow. Thanks for slowing the show up, Dave. So because he, 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 he was, you know, he was on strike, so he thought that was the humming. You mean? Oh. Yeah, 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 okay. the, 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 yeah, the ultimate noise. Dave, there's one professional comedian on the show, and it's not you. Um, so yes, so we're aware. More zings. Yes. Yeah, I know, right? Let's, let's have some Phil Tony on here. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we do this on every show. Um, but no, so to me, it's fascinating, and 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 I want your take on this. Oh. When he says make America great again, oh. in my opinion, America's, I know, right? But my opinion, America is already great. Yeah. Now, my, and we talked about this, I think, on Lost Dollar. Elon's going to come in, he says he wants to make everything more efficient and cut red tape and get rid of $2 trillion. Good luck. Yeah. My point is, is if we make America efficient and we can be, build America again and built in America and it means something, yeah. in my mind, that, and, and educate the children properly right and do all the stuff that we've lost in the 80s and forward nice. then we're making america great again so when trump says make america great again yeah and since you impersonate him and you you do your show i don't know what that means and no one still can tell me what that means i don't think even if we interviewed mr trump he could tell me what it means it is in a way that's that's how it's an effective slogan because it right. just means maybe it means something different you know to, to everybody to everyone to every yeah. every different everybody hears their own kind of version of it and uh right. yeah it's like what do you hate about trump what do you love about trump it right. is uh it's so different and then you know the catchphrases i i well look there's this whole project 2025 thing oh. and uh and so to get at what does make america great again really mean right. uh you, you you read these details of Project 2025, and it's basically, I mean, it comes across as religious fundamentalism, you know, get rid of the separation of church and state. That right. seems to be the main thing. But is, isn't is that kind of what uh, the core message is, at least for, you know, the Heritage Foundation people who keep seeing their uh, Messiah, if you will, in uh, in Trump. I almost right. died for things. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, anyway, so, so the... You know, for Dutch people, when they say, where do you get all these religious fundamentalists uh, in America? I tell them, yeah, you sent them. <laughs> they were right. called pilgrims. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like uh, make America New England again, you know, with like uh, the Taliban of mm-hmm. New England, uh, uh, you know, uh, the witch trials and whatever, you know, like the original mm-hmm. witch trials. I mean, they're really good ones. <laughs> like these <laughs> difficult women and you just you light them on fire. Uh, and, the good old and, days. So. Yeah. So in a way, that's kind of what uh, what I think a lot of people mean when they okay. say that. Yeah. What is it? I, and and here's Musk trying to you know cut uh, eliminate government waste. I mean, he's certainly going to start with. Have you seen the chart of all the government yeah. agencies that are suing him or yeah. punishing yeah. him or you know uh, taking him to court over what whatever? I'm. I have a feeling he knows which government agencies <laughs> to start with. Yeah. Um, be being, rip them it's up. really, I mean, it's the Brolagarchs. The 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 one Brolagarch in particular just bought the fucking U.S. election. He bought the U.S. Yeah. government. It was a steal, yeah. and uh, for 130 million, not bad. Yeah. Basically, so, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what uh, he paid. What happens next? Now, I've heard that Elon Musk also wants to uh, talk about defaulting on the U.S. debt. Uh, maybe there's got to be some short-term pain, you know, before we have long-term gain. If we default on our debt, that will kill the greenback globally. We oh, couldn't yeah. do that. We Which can't is do that. Apparently, you know, friend Putin might want, want. the whole. Well, yeah, because then you have the BRICS, BRICS countries. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, anything, I mean, or they replace it all with crypto. I don't know. Crypto is yeah. Well, well, well yeah, Trump's yeah, got his crypto plat. He's he's got his crypto platform. Mm-hmm. Um. So, you know, and he's got a crypto exchange. I don't think that maybe now his token's doing something and Bitcoin's at an all time high. Mm. Um, what I said, which got me not excited, but got me hopeful is maybe now we'll have actual 
laws that if you want to do something in the I call crypto algorithm, crypto algorithm space or tokenization space of whatever, yeah. you can now have a law instead of the, the Howie yeah. rule, which it can be yeah. interpreted 87 yeah. different ways. But yeah. now you have a law that says, listen, you can have an exchange, you do this, you're going to do it. And people are like, oh, okay, I can follow it. So yeah. now, yeah. maybe, but in the back of my mind, yeah. <laughs> I'm still like every government has a digital currency, right? Everybody. Yeah. China yeah. and India are said no, no crypto. And I'm mm. just, and if one day if Trump gets mad mm. at somebody and goes, you know what? I've decided that we're not going to do crypto anymore. Mm. Kill it all. And he does. All these crypto millionaires and billionaires are yeah. going to be poor the yeah. next day. Yeah. Like Sam so, Bank Fried all over again. Yeah. But that's what I'm thinking. It's like, let's at least if you're going to do it and we're going to push it, I'm all for it. But let's mm. have some, a, a book that says, you do A, B, C, all the way through Z. Yeah. I'm like, cool. Now I know what to do. I like you said Z. You've been, oh, you've been hanging like, out with the Brits more. Additus. I hang out with. Uh, I'm a global yeah. guy. But was, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't Trump? Wasn't Trump sort of totally anti crypto until they said, uh, "Well, you, exactly. how much would how yeah. much would you like us if we paid some money towards your uh, your yeah. uh, election campaign?" Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then he said, no, no more electricity. We have so much electricity for the <laughs> already. But yeah, um, but uh, yeah, I uh, it's it, I think the point that Stephen you're talking about was that uh, yeah, Trump is it's the same thing with the enemies list, you know? Yeah. Because uh, some friends of mine, you know, former colleague uh, Seth Myers, right. We used to work together at Boom Chicago in Amsterdam, but now he's, you know, doing SNL and the late right. night with Seth Myers. But he's in the top three that Trump tweeted out, tweeted out, truthed out uh, on what Jimmy Kimmel's one. Uh, I think right. Stephen Breyer was number two. Maybe oh, wow. he just won each of the big three networks. Uh, you know, the MSM networks, which will soon right. be outlawed in favor of YouTube. And, yes. And Facebook. But anyway, um, <laughs> but that's yeah. the thing like there's so much um uh, uh well sorry i guess i was saying that he's so unpredictable and that's still right. that's kind of bad yeah. for business so what's he's, what's this thing about youtube and, and, and trump then is he used is he a youtube batteries. supporter sorry what huh? is he a youtube supporter then uh trump or does or is or does he see it as the new way to communicate the new way i mean baron trump yeah said like oh you gotta watch theo vaughn and you gotta watch all these gamer videos uh okay you know right. new gen z yeah. guys who are just uh getting their voting and, and not and not the old fogies on, on the legacy uh, networks we just right plug out. and i mean politico just had a pretty handy chart they're like uh you know you, i don't know if i can show it but uh if you read newspapers national network news digital right. websites uh cable even cable news then you're like pretty much super likely to vote uh democrat or 50 50 but if you your primary source of news is a social media like facebook and instagram and tiktok i guess right. youtube or google or don't even follow political news those are uh 50 55 53 likely to vote for uh for republicans republicans wow uh That's yeah, yeah so youtube is uh it's great you know uh, <laughs> there's no fact checkers it's uh, say whatever yeah. you want uh, we, we do yeah. we make up stuff all the time on all our shows no there's kidding. an interesting oh. thing happening in amsterdam now it's a side note but i don't know if you want to hear about these pogroms sure. and the jewish you know the, the, the yeah they had a big riot yeah. last week where people got killed uh no one got killed as no, far as okay I think. uh but yeah there was some like terrible press uh about right. you know the pogroms in, in amsterdam uh, again and it happened to be on the uh, anniversary of crystal knox mm -hmm. uh what 7th of november but so uh it, it the, the interesting bit was that even like mainstream media really kind of missed the uh they, they dropped the ball you know on mm -hmm. on uh getting the full story the first time around and um I think they're still kind of struggling to figure out. So there was a, basically a football match between Maccabi Tel Aviv, Israel, right. and uh, Ajax, Amsterdam Ajax. So uh, these Maccabi fans, apparently, many of whom were in the IDF like just months ago, <laughs> right. there's a hardcore of these fans who go not just to the football matches, but like to the city center of places like Athens or Amsterdam. Right. And they start like looking for trouble. Gotcha. And so that's what happened on Wednesday night. 
uh, with the Maccabi fans who uh, were caught on social media, like um, ripping down people's flags from their build from their houses, uh, wow. you know, beating up taxi drivers. Um, so it's already like super sensitive subject right now. Um, right about uh, Gaza protests, about, you know, like pro or anti uh, memorial, you know, for 7 October kind of thing. Um, so it's already like a tinderbox, but these uh, basically bad actors, these, uh, <laughs> they're so bad. Um, <laughs> Maccabi fans uh, behaved very badly. And uh, right. I think they, first of all, made a big enemy of this taxi driver. There's a whole taxi mafia here. So right. they retaliated on Thursday night after the football match apparently and um so yeah there was unfortunately a uh co like a organized effort uh to hunt down the maccabi fans and that involved wow. like pulling people aside on the street are you israeli let me see your passport or whatever wow. and um, so that became like are you jewish let me see your papers right yeah, not a good look, especially on um, you know with the timing of it, uh, the you know Kristallnacht, the pogroms in Germany, and uh, mm. so anyway. Um, the, but wasn't the, that wasn't that the, that fire was also stoked by Israeli newspapers? They were the first ones to call. Oh, that could pogrom. be. Yeah, yeah, I think that might be. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And, and the Dutch press picked up on it. I don't think they were clever enough to have seen that. Yeah, but yeah, uh, maybe. you know, so there was there was, and they had they had said before, look, guys. Yeah. Because these these ultra groups, I mean, it could, yeah. uh, they go all around every football match, and they yeah. just go there. And they they're all on Telegram and these sort of things beforehand. They already, yeah. all the fights are already organised. I where guess they're gonna meet up yeah, and, and kick the crap out of each other. And so. what's what's happening now? Apparently, it, the, so these riots are still continuing. You know, like yeah, the yeah. Monday. So I saw that last night was they that they yeah. <laughs> excuse me destroyed a. A tram set it all out, setting it on fire. With and fire again, this is Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened yeah. in 1980 when the squatters, you know, were fighting the police and when they were yeah. the, you know, protesting the well, whatever cruise rockets, <coughs> and cruise missiles, and uh, the monarchy. But anyway, um, yeah, there's it, it's still pretty tense around town. But anyway, I guess the point that I was trying to get at was the shifting uh, kind of journalism because some of the best uh, journalism that has come out was this dude called uh, links leaning or something for on, on Instagram. And okay. he's just, you know, like not even this kind of, but like this, you know, nine by 16 uh, right. filming. Someone else was on TikTok, and uh, there's a dude called Bender on YouTube. And uh, these, there's like 14 year old kids that are doing really the best uh, quantitative journalism, mm -hmm. uh, qualitative, I guess you could say. So yeah, that they, I, uh, they're doing the like more traditional, the journalism. They're doing real journalism. I will say yeah. I've noticed from the Financial Times to the New York Times to the Wall Street Journal to the Economist. Um, I read them now, and I remember when I used to start reading them in the like the late seventies, early eighties. They yeah. were like real, like that was real reading. Like these were real papers. I read yeah. them now, and it's kind of like really, uh -huh. this is like really i don't care like i don't care about his sneakers and i like i just read it i'm like how dumb is this sometimes the financial times will do their what they call the big story and sure. that's usually pretty good but okay. the rest of it i read is kind of like crap the yeah. economist has got something yeah. called 1843 and that yeah, seems to be where the right yeah. the economist that they, they have a magazine called 1843 yeah, yeah, yeah. and that i get real stuff out of i do this all yeah. digitally of course right uh -huh. but the new york times and even the wall street journal now are just yeah. sort of like crap yeah. And then Bloomberg, yeah, both they're, sides. They're they're fifty fifty. And then you know if you watch Bloomberg, it's good because they're giving you kind of like they it's the market's doing this, the market's doing that. It's kind of you know it is yeah. what it is. Yeah, but yeah. the rest of it's just sort of like pandering to stupid. You know what I mean? And so well, most of it's syndicated as well. That's the problem. Yeah. This is the, this was one of the issues that came. I mean, I was watching. <clears throat> you know, from Dark Inside last night, there was was a journalist on there complaining about it that that everybody's got the same stories. Right. Uh, they just tweaked oh, a yeah. little bit because it's there's echo chamber. Yeah, account. yeah, because the two national newspapers, the Telegraph and El yeah. Dark Blood in, in Holland, yeah, uh, they own most of the provincial papers. So you, yeah. if you if you don't pick it up nationally, you pick it up to, through your through your let's say regional newspaper yeah. Yeah. with exactly the same dross as, as yeah. what's pushing out nationally. So nobody's has done that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So uh, and and that's yeah. one of the issues as well, you know, that real journalists, 
Yeah. And nobody wants to. The thing is, nobody wants to read it. That's the thing. You know, it's all. Um, oh, yeah. You know, oh, let's it's have really, a look. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, anodyne, uh, and and trying to play middle of the road, meaning you're appealing to nobody anymore, really. But we uh, we had a discussion yesterday, Stephen and I, about people's like we we've seen now that people watch a lot our shorts a lot, but we don't get a lot of comments. Ah. And when you when, when I was talking to people, some 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 young people uh, ah. last Friday when we all went out, they yeah. said, "Yeah, we don't have time for that." <laughs> so so even so even. So if they don't have time to read newspaper, they don't have time to watch news. They only have time to flip through uh, Instagram, TikTok, and shorts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you know, where would I have time to comment on something that's happening? Yeah. So even even that was, it started to sort of be a bit of a platform where people could say stuff, right? You know, and, and, and become interactive. Yeah. But yeah. that seems to, uh, yeah, nobody's got time for it. Uh, yeah, crazy. and there's just so much. There's so much more information yeah. to process all the time. I, 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 I still read my Financial Times like The Economist, like an idiot, cover to cover. Yeah, every day. The Financial, I just like it's uh, granted, it's online, but I like to read it cover to cover. Yeah, I just like, I a, just like a new world Christian. Yeah, there you go. But I mean, at the end, and being Jewish, that's very fun for me. Um, <laughs> but at the end of the, at the end of the day, though, I still want to see what's going on. And I figure The Economist still. Even though it's owned by the Japanese now, um, oh, yeah. well, gives me the best yeah. coverage yeah. globally with, yeah, yeah. without dumbing it down. Everybody else seems to dumb it down because I guess people uh, can't yeah, read and understand things. Yeah. yeah, they don't dumb it down. The Economist kind of dumbs it down a little bit, and then yeah. some stories they don't. I'm kind of like, you know, don't play to this audience. Play to the yeah. people that actually have IQs. Like, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I guess so. Well, the economists here, they, they they finally endorsed uh, Kamala Harris, and they really yeah, said, yeah, boy, if Trump does any of these uh, plans uh, for making the tax cuts permanent, for imposing mm -hmm. tariffs, or in de deporting all of these uh, you know low labor migrants, Immigrants. you're yeah. going to crash the economy, dude. What do you? What do we think? Um, I think if you're going to have internment camps like in the 40s, that would yeah. be interesting, yeah. um, because. And I've said this on shows. My concern is if you do this, okay, you know, 80, 70, 80 million, 100 million people voted for you. They're going to be behind you. There's a group that could care less, and there's a group that didn't vote for you. Right. But if you're going to start rounding up 11 million illegal, for lack of a term, immigrants or people that don't fall within your guideline, right? at what point do you think that, let's say, when you get the first couple million, that just say the other six or sevens go, you know what? Screw you. And yeah. you start looking like South America, where they have riots in the streets and you have violence against the police. I mean, specifically the Venezuela, you can say it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry. So I'm or Mexico, where they do where uh, the you know, drug lords have shootouts uh, with the cops yeah, and the cops lose. At yeah. what point do you think that they're going to just be like, you know what? It's okay, Donnie. We're gonna go. Right. At some point, I think they're gonna be like, you know what? Screw you. Yeah. Um, and that's where they're gonna what, leave. No, no, no. I think they're going to fight back. I, I see. Okay. And, yeah. and so my point has always been, in whether, however Mr. Musk, Mr. Musk is talking about cutting Social Security and Medicare, and I'm like, really? You're going to piss off those people? You're screwed yeah. there because a lot yeah. of them, they'll come, yeah. they'll find you. Yeah. Um, and I'm yeah. like, so everything you're doing yeah. is pissing off everybody. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, if, if, they, if they go down the Venezuelan route, I mean, they could they could have Christmas now. I mean, the Venezuelans have changed the president. In Venezuela has changed the date of Christmas. So, yeah, we're not know. talking about that. So, but my point is, my point is this: if you don't come up with a plan that's reasonable, right, and that you can say, There's, even no, he wants to no cut hundred thousand. Wait, 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 he wants to cut a hundred thousand federal employees. Okay, yeah. I understand his bureaucracy. Yeah, I go back to my original. How are we going to do it so it? It's a smooth, easy transition. Because if you don't, you, whether you have high inflation, you have riots, you have worse, yeah. you have to do something. Like a buddy of mine joked the other day, he sent me a text. He goes, you know, why is it Musk, since he has $230 billion, give every American over 18 yeah. a, a million dollars? He yeah. says, I think that's $23 billion. He yeah. said he made 50-some-odd billion as the CEO of yeah. Tesla. He said yeah. he won't even miss it. No. And this way... You can do everything you want to do. You yeah. already paid 130 million to be whatever you are in the government. <laughs> spend 23, spend another say 30 billion yeah. by the American people, and they'll do whatever you tell me. Like, yeah, go do, kick them out. We don't care. We got a million in the bank. Right. And I was like, you know, 
That's very interesting because he has the wherewithal to technically yeah. go to the U.S. Treasury. I personally want to give everybody a million dollars that's over 18. Yeah. Think well, about does that. He ha does he have the money? I mean, uh, I mean – Oh, does he have it in cash? You mean? Yeah, he had. Yeah, he had, I think he's he's probably got like say, let's say he's fifty billion in cash. Yeah, he's only going to spend say thirty like, billion under the under good. the bed. You mean in a box, something like that? Well, something like most people, yeah. they keep it at banks around the globe. But my point is, if I was going to do everything they're going to do, yeah. and I'm trying to keep the peace and not yeah. have riots or a civil war or something like yeah. that, yeah, yeah, you know what? I could, and whether they're poor or rich or they're billionaires, I'd go. You know why I'm going to do. Yeah. Trump comes out his second day in office and says, you know what we're going to do for you, American people, because we're going to get rid of all these undesirable people and we're going to make it blah, blah, blah. And there's going to be some tough times, but to make your life easier. Yeah. And you give everybody over 18, they filed a tax return last year type of thing. Sure. Whether you, whether we're going to each give you a million dollars. And yeah, Musk is going to write that. Not a million. That, yeah. And so like all of a sudden now, yeah. Elon writes his 23 or $30 billion check. Right. Everybody gets a million dollars in their bank. In crypto. Now, now, now Trump can yeah. do yeah, in crypto. whatever. Get a way to do it. No, I wouldn't do it in crypto because um, no one knows <laughs> how to he use could it. Do it. That's the he problem. Could do it in you know? He could do it in but crypto. My point is all of a sudden now everybody in America yeah. will back whatever Trump and no, must say yeah, because you can literally you buy them. But yeah, you, you, after you've bought the election and you've bought the U.S. government, you yeah, might as yeah, well buy the American. Buy the people. people. Because yeah. now everybody has money. So when it gets economically difficult, because a right. million dollars, I mean, is not a lot of money. Like even if they give it to you tax free, it's not a lot. Think about it. A yeah. million dollars. If you don't piss it away, yeah. and you and people that are just say um, they don't have anything, they may well. I'm going to buy a house or a car. And yeah. When they're done, they'll have maybe a, a few hundred thousand left, right? Yeah. So you know they're going to go bankrupt sooner than later. Yeah. Other yeah. people are going to put it in the bank. Kids are going to pay off their loans. Whatever it is. So yeah. a million is not going to be a lot. But what it does uh -huh. is for just say the first eighteen to twenty four months where you have to yeah, yeah, sure. like we're yeah, going to have yeah. a tough time. Million dollars. You, awesome. you don't have a tough time, do you? Right. I have a million dollars tax free. That oh my god, the Trump right. administration through Elon gave it to me. I, I thought think, that was I a think, very interesting hypothesis that he brought up. I, I was think, like, that's interesting. I think that, that, that uh, Greg hit the nail on the head because it's, you know if Trump is going to be Santa, he could right. give everybody crypto money. You know, saying because I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to make you all rich. You just get point and, one uh, crypto and watch yeah. it <laughs> make you zero. Watch it appreciate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. And then, uh, and then, yeah. I mean, that that's the easiest way to do it, isn't it? Very no, that'd be low. a million dollars, and here's why: Elon's yeah. got his. Whether you want to buy his cyber garbage can, or yeah. you want to buy his robots, or you know, you have to go buy food. Well, you know, it's little things like food, medical things like that. But that million dollars, mm -hmm. because when you start raising, and I guess people don't get this. When tariffs are charged, they don't realize that the Chinese government's actually not paying it. They're just passing it on. Yeah. So when I buy something today for a dollar and then you're going to raise tariffs to like five dollars, right. now I'm paying ten dollars. Right. Now oh, all of yeah. a, that's what I'm saying. A million dollars yeah. to survive in America yeah. isn't yeah. going to last that long. No. Well, so, here I you, know, do you know yeah. what earlier Earlier things. in the show, yeah. you said to me, "There's only one comedian on this on this uh, particular broadcast," and now all of a sudden, there's two because you've turned into a communist, Stephen. So that's, ah, the, that's, the, that, that, that's the funniest Medium thing power. I've heard. So, yeah. You know, giving money oh. away. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. but that's a yeah. yeah. They say it's communism. It's really a totalitarianism. But that's true. Know, that's ah, I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to prevent. It's got an ism yeah. on the end of it. That's the most important yeah. thing. Let, yeah. me, let me do it this way. I'm trying to prevent. Yeah. And when my friend told me this, we had literally a two or three hour dialogue about it over cigars and scotch because we had to get on Zoom now and discuss it. I'm to his point and to my point, I think I'm trying to prevent riots in the streets and a civil war and the military yeah. being called out on American people. So if I'm going to do what Mr. If Mr. Trump's going to do what he said, and Elon's going to cut trillions of dollars. And listen, I'm OK with getting through bureaucracy and whatever, but. If you do it properly, it's seamless. It's like no, everyone's going to be fine with it. If you don't do it properly, yeah. then it's not seamless. People that are fat and happy, if you will, whether it's the lower middle class, lower income, middle, whatever it might be, even the rich, at some point they get disgruntled because Quinsela, they're made no longer here. Their gardeners no longer, right? But yeah. you have to round them all up. So if you can't make it worth the American public's while to round them all up. At some point, 
you know, like these kids that don't know the difference between Palestine and Israel that are protesting in the United States, right? Those same idiots are going to be like, oh, we need to do something. You know, you cross a line of peaceful demonstration to let's now go to the next level. And the next level is not pretty. And the United States has not really seen that. They've seen it in Harlem um, in the 60s. They saw it in the Watts riots in the 60s and 70s in L.A. They saw it after the O.J. Simpson thing. They've never seen it nationally. What I'm trying, and I don't want, is I don't really want to see tanks rolling down wherever I live, whatever street in America. So what I'm saying is his hypothesis of let's give a million dollars let Musk write the check. It's 23 right. or 30, whatever billion. Who yeah. cares? He doesn't. He'll make it up next week in, a, in another board that pays him stupid money. Yeah. And American people will be like, yeah, round up whoever. And I don't you know care. You to sign all of the checks in the memo section? USA. USA. Yeah, right. Well, no, they just wire it to you, I'm assuming, into your bank. But just uh, think no. if you Trump do is going to want to put his name on there. It has to be. That's true. I guess everybody will get a check. But yeah. if you do it that way and, and just play this through, yeah. All of a sudden, you have a million dollars in your bank. Now, then, now then, it makes sense because then, then it's interesting, all the, right? All those people that he was going to cut out of the administration because there's so, so many of them, too yeah. many of them in local government, they can all be, you know, writing out these checks, wouldn't they? And then just, you know, write them out by hand. And Maybe then there's a golden parachute for everybody who gets yeah, the app. There's your golden parachute. Yeah. Exactly. But I'm, yeah. That's the oh, and they I get paid in cryptos. I mean, I'll, the 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 now, forget going the crypto. Forget the forget the crypto. I'm just yeah. saying most Americans don't understand crypto because it's difficult. You have to have 42 wallets, 17 passwords. It is it's a pain in the butt. And and the banks All right now words. aren't. What? That, yeah. That's crazy, right? And the banks aren't accepting crypto like they accept cash. So for this, oh, yeah. that and I, they will. But once again, that's where these new laws come in. But for the next 24 months, while you're doing all this other stuff, yeah, um, like isolationists, tariffs, yeah, deporting, and you need, you really need 300 million people or how many people are over 18 to get behind yeah, you. I, I hope you and your friend are right. I hope everybody. I, gets I'm assuming really we're not. And I well, hope I'm it's just it's, it's so cute that you think that anything that Trump does in in the White House would be not chaotic. And well, it'll, it'll be chaotic. It'll be seamless. Maybe yeah. we got Susie Wiles this time. You know, maybe. Yeah. There's a, but yeah. Uh, no, his buddy Steve something or other is the co chief to her, the yeah. idiot from before with the big head and the know. bald head. Yeah. yeah. So, Michael. yeah, yeah. So, I I think she's the adult in the room. And, and my buddy said to me, he goes, How long do you think she'll last? Do you think she'll make it to the inauguration? And I was right. like, I, oh, So, I'm like, I just need her to make it like 100 days after. I'd be happy. I but I, I, I think it's going to be interesting. He picked Mark Rubio. Um, to do whatever he's going to do. He picked another like guy. Don't know what that yep. means. Yeah. Do you think that, so, uh, you know, Ty- Taiwan will, you know, go to China in the next four years? Because uh, that's a world war. It's not going to do anything. Yeah. If we don't, well, if we get out of the, 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 the Pacific NATO, which yeah. we're part of, yeah. then no, China is going to be, this is open game. The problem is you have North Korea. I'm sorry. You have South Korea and Japan. Yeah. Um, and they're going to be like, yeah, no, I don't think so. You're threatening us now. So once again, there's this big global game. So yes, I know it's our, in our cute little euphoric world, everything would be seamless. Most likely in our cute little euphoric world, everything is going to be, as they say, you know, in Yiddish, Hazarai, all crazy. Yeah. Um, and I don't see seamless. I seem this like, you know, remember the game of risk we all played when we were kids? Never like, get involved games. in a land war in Asia. Right. But my point is, like in risk, though, you know, like five year olds playing risk. This is what this reminds me of now. It's like, I rolled the dice. Oh my God, look, I can, you know, and, and it's like, it, it, this is the real world. Like, people will die. And I'm kind well, of maybe, just trying, can we maybe, not Trump do that? Will, maybe Trump will be able to see it out, but because of like 90, I think 90% or certainly 90 plus percent of all the chips that we need today are coming out of Taiwan. Right. And uh, and but the Taiwanese uh, folks was it T T M something or T M C S yeah T M C S yeah they haven't quite they haven't really got up to speed for the factory in Arizona so right. once once that up, once that's up and running yeah. and they could because that that's the that's the huge dynamic they can't let Taiwan go while yeah. while so many chips are still coming. Well, you know, uh, Biden and the Chips Act. Uh, if yeah, but, you know. uh, thank goodness the chips are coming. The Dutch uh, investments. The Dutch are investing big into the uh, chips, uh, Silicon Valley, Desert Valley, whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they uh, ASML. 
Yeah. Trump did that. I, Trump is the one who brought the, the Taiwanese factory over here that never got built. And today oh, yeah. in the financial, yeah, that was Trump back in 2016 or 15 or 17 or 18. They uh -huh. did the big land breaking and nothing happened. That wasn't a Biden thing. The other uh -huh. thing is today, Amazon said they're trying Wait, to figure what was out how to do that ships. Was I'm oh, sorry. That's I I've, I've, the Chips Act was the chip, the, masturbation the, from the Democrats. Uh, the, chip, the Chips Act is that he's now, but he, uh, the, Deb Nell said, he's the Taiwanese company, we, you know, we're not going to be selling any of these advanced chips to China. Right. Uh, ASML um, had been oh, Sarah made, ASML from, from you know, the Dutch, uh, yeah. the, the, the chip makers, um, chip machine for the machines to make chips. Yeah. yeah. Are done in uh, made by this one country, a company in Holland. Yeah, and they've they've done some sort of co-op with Intel. But got, but Intel's behind the curve, so um, yeah, who knows? But until like uh, that, at least to get these factories up and running to any sort of speed that the uh, Taiwanese are up to now is yeah. with six or seven years, uh, you know, away from that. I, I, so. so the Dutch, you know, ASML, these are the people who make the machines that make the chips. That make chips, And then yeah. they lease them to Taiwan or whatever. Um, I talked yeah. to a guy, I did a show at their campus in, uh, you know, Eindhoven, Feldhoven. Yeah. And I was um, talking to a guy after the show, and I said, you know, what do you do here? Everybody's here so highly educated. It's like a brain uh, port. You know, it's like the, uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're getting the best and brightest for all, all over the world to do all this high tech stuff. To, and so he said, yeah, I do fire prevention. And I thought, oh, well, OK, that's cool. Someone has to run the fire drills. And he said, right. no, 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 fire prevention. Like we're creating uh, reactions that are hotter than the surface of the sun. So I have to make sure that we have a complete vacuum, because if there's even one speck of dust, then it could be like a, you know, uh, what did he say? Like a catastrophic uh, chain reaction that would <laughs> Let's maybe destroy the world, <laughs> blow up an entire city. Like ah, fire prevention, right? So yeah, yeah it's it's a high risk, high reward, high you know safety, high tech. Uh, yeah, I can imagine that it takes a lot. But of course, the American government puts so much present uh, pressure on ASML, so they can't supply new chip making machines to China. That's that's mm. now. You know that's done and dusted. Mm. Um, they can support ones which are already there, uh, and the Chinese have tried to emulate the ASML machines and haven't been able to. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's a lot of st stuff resting on this, and I think while while Taiwan is still supplying, you know, ninety percent of the world's chips that yeah. we all that we all need, yeah, and not necessary not necessary to eat this time, um, then I think America's good, whoever it is. Has Amazon to, now has to have, hold hold their hand over over the you know as an umbrella of safety over um, yeah. over Taiwan. Amazon said today in the Financial Times that they are now trying to outdo Taiwan in chip making because you know Amazon does everything. So and then we invest in AI companies and chip companies on in our side so we kind of know what's out there. And I'm kind of like, dude, all you have to do is go partner with these guys. They're already ready to go. And Amazon's like, we're going to come in new. And like, I always joke, I'm like, we got a company that can make a chip that runs 33 times faster than the fastest chip right now. Huh. And it uses one thousandth less power wow. than the chips that are out now. And everyone, and they've got patents and they're talking yeah. to different universities and governments. But yeah. all these big companies are like, we're going to do a new chip and we're going to do this. I'm like, really? Yeah. We, I can make two phone calls and you can, you can do it tomorrow. Seems and they're like, all kind yeah, of yeah, trying to come yeah. up with stuff, but yeah. yeah, they all have their head up there, but they're all trying to figure out how they just make more money yeah, than yeah, yeah. the next. And it's, well, it's then this vicious is vicious game. Getting back to the, the good news that I keep trying to right. circle back to. And I got a couple examples to, to round us off before we go. Yes. But indeed, the chips that are super uh, efficient and use less power, like you know, that, that's what we're talking about. Th these right. could be the game changers, you know, that we look back um 30 years from now and think like, oh, you know, Betamax versus VHS, you know, right. <laughs> oh yeah. Betamax was a better technology. Oh, too bad. But hopefully we get yeah. it right. But they didn't, they didn't like porn. That's why the reason they lost the battle. I guess. Yeah, that might be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, wait, yeah. so here's one more. What do, what do you want? This is fun uh, news. Um, banana peels can be used for textiles and fuel. Nah. Uh, there's a portable wind turbine that can charge your phone in 20 minutes. Cool. Uh, I thought that, yeah, like, that's just a hey, Elon. Give one of those. That's a bit, is that a bit big to put in your pocket, though? And that's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a huge wind turbine. It's actually like I think you could fit it in your pocket. 
this guy oh, yeah. uh, set it up on a tripod and uh, like a collapsible tripod, and it's it's uh, small enough for like the front pouch of your back backpack, I think. Nice. Um, yeah, that's good. Oh, there's other. There's a whole new thing we talked about fuel with you know sustainable aviation yeah. fuel, synthetic aviation fuel, but um, there's a car that can now run on raw sewage poop. I guess. Go to um, work with that. <laughs> an H2 car. But what that's else? Called is, a, like, called so a Tesla. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> They're capturing CO2. And right. what do you do with it? Well, now apparently you can turn the captured CO2 into fuel. Um, and this was yeah, in, okay. I think. So, you know, David, when you were talking about hopefully the exhaust from the airplane can be turned into the fuel, it's like a Mr. Neutron from, you know, Back to the Future. We might be closer to that than, than I thought. Um, and also, oh, yeah, eight eight ounces of this new powder from a laboratory in Alberta, Canada, I think they can remove as much CO2 from uh, f uh, as a tree in a year. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's like, right. So it, these new technologies for not only reducing CO2 emissions, but removing, you know, uh, existing yeah. CO2 uh, from the atmosphere, which also has to happen. Otherwise, it's like humidifier, dehumidifier. Uh, yeah, then uh, th there's whole new technologies that are maybe just coming online. So, and if we can do something with the CO2 that we... Well, have, the other or, the other really green one that I, th that I heard here a couple of weeks yeah. ago yeah. is that they're using old mine shafts. Right. We've, dug, we've dug mines over the whole world. Yeah. And it, it works on a simple process. It just let this basically it's a heavy weight that goes down. The battery, the gravity down. battery. Yeah. yeah, yeah, as it produces this 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 electronic charge, and that uh, oh, yeah. to pull it back to pull it back up again is only a quarter of what they need, and the rest they oh, yeah. for the system. Yeah, yeah so it's, yeah. so all these extinct coal mines and yeah. the coal mine workers, yeah. you know, who had nothing to do. You know, yeah, green yeah. industry is potentially there on your doorstep again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's mm -hmm. they're, they're talking about uh, capturing methane from these old uh, 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 mines. And one of them in Alsace-Lorraine in France contained a whole lot of white hydrogen, apparently, like naturally occurring hydrogen. Like, hello, yeah. that's... Not, uh, so it's um, unracist. Uh, racist. Uh, <laughs> exactly. It's very racist. Yeah. Hydrogen, but we have to tolerate that now. It's very... It's in. <laughs> It's uh, correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, so those are again. Yeah, that's another Very good cool. example. So I, I was going to wrap up on that since we're about. <laughs> I like that. Well, Greg, it's always good to see you. Before we wrap up officially, tell yeah. everybody where uh, you're everywhere. So tell everybody where you are. If they, I know if they want to see you or whatever, and hopefully yeah, next man. month, which all we're going to talk about next month is positive news and climate change yay <laughs> why not uh yeah, yeah the um the, the the netherlands is where i'm uh, based right now so i'm doing a bunch of shows uh all over the netherlands and uh i indeed can be seen on uh america's funniest home videos the dutch uh market edition uh, my voice will appear uh right. which is a pretty fun gig i gotta say uh more than that i am when's, when's that gig because i looked at the weekend and you weren't on you're not on yet are you yeah 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, okay. Yeah, at the moment, they have a mix, I think, of uh, okay. not Bob Saget, but the guy after Bob Saget, and then this Alfonso guy. Who? Right. But anyway, it's 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 in the Dutch market. It's getting to be exclusively just one voice. Hello. Ooh, so, very nice. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's. Uh, <laughs> we have to schedule some more uh, sessions, I think, because we have all mm -hmm. the rest of the season to do. Just <laughs> Uh, anyway, but so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, either doing solo show or stand-up gigs uh, all, all around the Netherlands based in Amsterdam mostly. So. Very cool. And the next three solo shows, I know you're doing one tomorrow night in... Oh, yeah. Uh, what is it? Abril uh, and then... Uh, Abril, Abril. And Utrecht Abril. and then uh, outside of The Hague. Uh, Very cool. Well, yeah. if you're in Amsterdam or the Netherlands and you would like to see Mr. Greg... Please go see him. And when you see yeah. him, tell him you saw him here. He won't care. Just tell him that just makes us feel better. Um, and anyway, we will see. There you go. We will see him next month. And next month, we'll talk all about the good climate news. The election is over. Unless something stupid happens, we'll talk about that. But if not, uh, all the, the good climate stuff that's out there. Um, and maybe he'll do some more Trump for us. And then that's it. Greg, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, um, guys. And we look forward to seeing you next month. And have a great uh, rest of your tour. All right. Yeah, thanks. I'm looking forward to it. Cheers, right. everybody. Don't See forget to like and subscribe. Bye, everybody.